do 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 Nate, Doug, Doug, Nate. Nate, good, good, been busy. It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been good. It's been, it's been. Usually, the beginning of the year is slow. Uh, at least traditionally, it has been. But I had a variety of stuff: commercial stuff, like new clients. It's just been. It's. I can't explain it. It just. But it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was. Uh, huh? Yeah. Big defensive struggle there. It was. Uh, yeah. Um, no, that was a good. It was a good trip. Aside from, I mean, it snowed, but it's February. It's you know. Yeah. But it was pretty brutally cold. Like one day, it was. It was. It was pretty cold. But. All right. No mic. Okay. All right. Oh, doorbell's ringing again. Oh, they may have figured it out. Yeah. All right. So we're, is Ron here? Oh, he bailed on me. All right. All right. That's right. I'm going to fill Ron's time with ancient sea shanties. If Ron doesn't come back, we're going to. Oh, Ron's back. Okay. Yeah, he rang. I think he rang the door. All right. Um, you just keep working on the mic, and I'll. All right. So, um, bless you. Ron, do you want to do you want to come up here? Do you want me just to, to jibber jabber a little bit about what? All right, so Ron and I uh, worked on the concept for this workshop. Uh, we started talking about it last year, uh, you know, um, about our experiences in dealing with other photographers um, at events, et cetera, um, and some of the struggles that photographers have in kind of getting from point A to point B Whatever their point A may be and whatever their point B may be, it's all, it's all a little different. Um, so we thought that putting together you know, a workshop like this would be valuable um, just for the community. I mean, obviously, we didn't charge a whole lot of money for it. For it. We're just basically just trying to cover the room cost. Um, but we're trying to elevate uh, the community, right? So... I have no idea how long my presentation is. We may be here for a few days. Um, yeah, and there's food in there. So we've got provisions if, you know. Um, a lot of this is, is, common, is, is common sense stuff, to be honest with you. But I feel like it bears repeating or bears um, being a kind of some affirmation or confirmation if you're thinking, geez, is this the right way to do something? In somebody else's opinion, it may or may not be. So, um, and if I say stuff that's just like, like I'm, I have no idea, I have a general uh, idea of the, of the skill level and experience level in the room, um, but I'm going to kind of talk to, to sort of the lowest common denominator. So if you feel like it's condescending, and Seth, condescending means when you talk down to someone. Um, don't take it personally. I'm just trying to make sure that we're, we're covering stuff, okay? Um, so if you don't know who I am, um, you're better off for it. Um, that was a joke. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Thank you. And did I leave the remote somewhere? Hang on. you got to be kidding me. Oh, here it is. Black remote in a dark room. So... Um, my name is Chris. Hi. Um, I usually start, no, I was I think I would see, um, I have a studio next door. I meant to look up to see how long I've been a uh, full-time freelance photographer. It's been at least eight years. I've been on my own, um, 20 years, um, being paid to do stuff. So I've been around a little bit. 
I work with small businesses. Um, I work with big corporations, big colleges, um, and the NBA. I guess mo most people know me from that, at least around here. Um, so <clears throat> I wanted to start with uh, a quote from Greg Heisler, who is kind of a rock star. N none of you have ever heard of him, um, I'm willing to bet. Um, but uber talented guy. Uh, anyway, I don't need to, to expound on that. But this is a great quote. This is one of my favorite quotes from a photographer. And uh, I mean, yeah, we're responsible for creating a climate in which we can do our best work. Um, and that means on the set, that means with the camera in our hands, right? Preparing, being ready for anything. Um, but it also means, I think, setting uh, the groundwork and being mentally prepared a day or week or a month prior to the shoot. Um, and at this, and also, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Um, thankfully, there's no questions yet. Uh, so I wanted. To, here's another. So these are my immutable laws. Um, and I, I. These are definitely solid on the list. I may add more. There's some honorable mentions coming up, but these are kind of like instead of a mission statement. Um, I try to uh, work with these and, and incorporate these and never forget these. Um, I have heard from more than one photographer, like people that I want to be, so to speak, um, or at a, at a level I want to be, is to be coachable. Um, don't be stuck in your, in your own system. Don't be stuck in your own patterns. Um, and listen. There's an old adage that I hate, God gave you two ears and one mouth, you know what I mean? So there's a, there's a reason for that, right? Um, you can hear, just by hanging out for, with photographers, um, you can kind of let that coaching happen. You can hear terminology, um, and it doesn't have to be photographers, it can be people in the spaces that you're working. Um, but this is kind of like never stop learning, too. Right? I mean, that could be up there as well, but I like be coachable. I feel like that's a little, a little more better. Um, early is on time. Again, this is the condescending thing, Seth. That's where I talked to you. Uh, early is on time. Um, if you're, again, it's common sense, right? So I would rather sit in a parking lot of a gig 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the, I have to walk in and not worry about whether there's a car accident between me and, and, the, and the gig, or whether I forgot to put gas in, or there's a, there was a really good song and I had to sit in the car because it was an eight minute song from the 70s. Um, that was kind of a joke. Um, early is on time. And, and so this, not just, this is not just a game day advice, right? You walk in a few minutes early, if it's a big venue, you don't know where, where your shoot is, um, or it's, a, it's, it's uh, you know, you have to find your point of contact. Um, some, most, of my, many of my clients are stretched pretty thin. And we're like the last people that they think about. They're like, oh crap, we need a photographer. And they don't think about it because they're just like, the, one of my least things, well, the least, least favorite things is, oh, well, you're the expert, we'll just let you handle it. It's just like, that's nice, but that doesn't really work well for you. Um, so if you show up late, they're stressing. We should, our job should be to take stress away. Don't worry about it. I got it. Don't worry about it. That's what they want to hear, and they want you to be able to back that up. Always work in the client's best interest. Um, and there's a little bit more to that in another slide, but uh, so I won't sit too long on that. But... Um, uh, when a client hires me, I am working for them. And if they, if I get a, a request, you know, somebody reaches out to me and they're like, you know, can you do X, Y, or Z? Well, for instance, like a wedding. I don't really do weddings. I don't advertise weddings. I do, you know, maybe one or two a year, and those are very special occasions. Um, 
I'm working in the client's best interest to say, um, in no particular order, here, call Ron or call Seth. Like the two wedding guys that I really know, you know. Um, and there's other things. There, there's other things with that uh, as well. And there, this will feed a lot of the next slides will kind of refer back to this stuff. This is a huge one. Treat every gig like it's your next big break. Um, this is easier said than done. You know, in in sports, like if you're uh, if you're getting down to the to the, you're jockeying for a playoff position, and you've got the conference champion or the, the conference leader uh, ahead, uh, you know, coming up this weekend, but you've got some scrub team in the middle, and you overlook that scrub game, you're going to get your butt kicked oftentimes, unless you're this year's Celtics, apparently. But actually, that happens to them, too. Um, and, and in addition to that, every client that hires you is expecting, um, is expecting your persona, your, your body of work to be represented in, in that job. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and also we, we go back to this as well later, but, um, I saw a photographer mail in a job once, like mailed it in. And that particular photographer got flamed on 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 uh, social media for it. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get into details, but um, I think that that photographer was looking past that job, and it was not good optics for that person. Um, gee, I didn't mention gender or anything, so good, good for me. I didn't say him or her. To, like, okay, it's a very good question. So. I do work, I do a variety of work, but a lot of, some of the work that I do is um, like Spirit of Springfield. They're nonprofit. I give them a hometown discount. I'm not afraid to say that because they're, they're like ambassadors for me and I think that they do a wonderful job for what they do in the city. Um, I could show up in theory, mailing in it would be me showing up perhaps hungover, me showing up not ready for the job and just just throwing just throwing taking a few snapshots and not yeah you know what i mean so um but i don't want to do that that's my reputation and that's you know it, and it's easy to do that sometimes when you don't value what you're doing right um which is why in a way like i had actually entertained not charging them at all at one point a few years ago, I'm just like, you know, why don't I just make it a donation and kind donation? But then I, I thought about it a little bit and actually was chatting with them about it. Like, you know what? There's value in, what, in me charging them. And if I, it, it's a mental thing. If I showed up and I wasn't getting paid um, and then I had a huge client the next day, you know, like paying the rent and, and two hours of work, uh, I may mail it in and I don't want to do that. Um, and the other thing too is you don't know who's watching. You can be at a, you can be at a gig and you might think it's a, a basic low end gig, but somebody could be there as a guest, like some CEO, of some fortune 50 company or the wife of somebody or the spouse of somebody that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you mailing it in is really, again, it's bad. It's just bad optics. And how you treat everyone matters. Everyone. Um, this, they, these all, these all kind of piggyback, but this is the same thing. It's like, I have seen people treat other people like subhuman, and that bugs the hell out of me. Um, and again, I don't want to be seen doing. I, I mean, I wouldn't do that anyway. But you know what I mean? It's just, it's one of those. It's, it's one of those things. Um, geez, I thought I had a story with that too. I have a story with all of these, to be honest with you, but, um, how you treat everyone matters. It's, it's, uh, it's very important. Um, a couple of honorable mentions for my immutable laws. Maybe one of them gets in there at some point. You got to give people the same experience you'd want. Like going back to being late. Like, like if I was, if I 
I had a seven o'clock gig and I leave, I, it's a 15 minute drive and I leave at quarter of and I'm speeding and I get a, a speeding ticket. They don't want pissed off speeding ticket Chris showing up at their shoot. They want the guy that they hired. They want the guy that's gonna, you know, so give people the same experience you'd want um, and in, in a way that's sort of like matching energy and, and, and all that thing. Some people are a little low key, some events are that way. Um, under promise and over deliver is a very uh, uh, common sort of tenant in a business. Um, you can't really do it all the time because clients will expect it, I think. Um, when, I, when I say under, under promise, yeah, under deliver, when I say under promise, I mean, you know, I'm going to have photos for you by the end of next week. Now, I know in theory I should be able to get them the photos much sooner than that, and I generally will. Um, but sometimes it's not the case. So I have a little pad in there, and, and frankly, I, can be, I get calls um, day before, day of for events. Are you, are you available? We have somebody coming in for a headshot. It's a, they're a salesperson from our West Coast, whatever. And it's like, um, that's a day I can't edit, or that's like four hours that I can't edit. Um, but this is, a, this is great. You know, this, this, if you undersell a little bit, um, I mean, don't undersell, I mean, you want to represent what you're going to do, obviously. Um, but if you can exceed the client's expectations, you're going you're gonna to make them real happy. Yes, sir. What if the client doesn't necessarily set a particular expectation? They hire you to shoot a band, let's say. They don't say how many pictures they want. And, but you are usually generous and will give what's appropriate or more than appropriate covering the event. Are there any rules of thumb for the maybe over deliver piece of that? So, yes. Yeah, so talking to your client is, is important, and, and I, I switched this. Uh, yeah, so there's a few things going on here. Um, one thing that I used to do back early on was I over-delivered, which you're supposed to do based on that previous slide, but you don't want to dump 500 photos on, on a client. Um, it's always fair to ask a client. So let's say it's a venue and they've done this before, right? If you, if you know the client's um, history, um, then you can ask them, so what ballpark generally, you know, do you, are you looking for for photos? How many photos? You know, um, it really depends. So if you're shooting a, a big act, um, you have the first three songs and then they kick you out. Um, there's only so much you can get, and you don't want to send them duplicates. You don't want to send them, um, well, here's the lead singer, you know, with doing this, doing this, doing this, and it's just like burst in a frame. Pick the best one and send it, you know? So be kind of judicious in that. I know I'm not really answering your question per se, but um, don't flood them, you know, and, and any photo that you send them, um, make sure you've run it through your sluice, you've color corrected it, you've edited it, and all that. Um, another good question, though, would be to ask the client, well, how do you intend on using the photos? Well, so for MGM, you know, it's generally like a little recap, social media recap, but I also know that they'll use images, like they'd used one of my Dropkick Murphys images on a billboard. So, you know, the resolution's gotta be a little bigger. Um, if they say, well, we just share the whole gallery to Facebook, that's great to know. It's because now you really don't want to have duplicates. Like you don't want to, like if, you're, if you shoot a burst, you don't want to send all three or four photos from that burst because it's going to look like crap, at least to other photographers perhaps. You know what I'm saying? But they'll be like, well, why did they send us four images? And they may not even be able to tell that they're different images. You know what I mean? So... So communication with the client, I think, is, is, is a big part of that. And don't be afraid to ask questions. So, um, and I think that's part of it. I think that a lot of the slides sort of answer your question in, in part as we, as we go forward. 
Um, oh, we got somebody coming in here. So um, you're an extension of your client, whether you like it or not. Um, meaning, like when I when I'm shooting a, when I would shoot a concert at MGM, people would ask me for directions, and if I'm like, I don't know, I'm working. That's crappy. That's just you're not being good to them. There's a lot. We've already covered a lot of this. We're, I'm not being nice to them. Um, you know, and I, I, I want. I like to try to be seamless with 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 the client. Um, even though you know I'm really uh, I'm really not uh, part of their organization, I do reflect on on them. Um, so again, if you if you know what the client's vision is for that gig, um, how are you going to use the photos? Oh, it's just for the web, or so if it's just for the web, I'm like, okay, you're not going to do any print with this. No, okay. So then I know I can kind of cheat my ISO up. Right? I mean, this is not about, about tech stuff, but I know that I can, I can get a little loosey with, with, the, with the ISO. Um, and the creative voice part is really sort of why they've hired you, right? So they say, well, I, I want to see a lead singer, but I want to know that the room was full, even if there's only 10 people in the room. So, you know, um, using, using that... Uh, creative voice, knowing how to do that stuff. You just, again, you're trying to work in the client's best interest, which is what we've, we, we talked about. Um, the other thing is uh, never scoop your client. Um, what that means, and I, 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 that's happened, and I, luckily it was someone that I knew, so I reached out to them and I said, did you post a photo before the client could post it? Because I knew the client and I knew the photographer. And he, they're like, yep. And I'm like, you guys should take that down and talk to the client. I have clients where I have embargoes, meaning I'm not allowed to show any image until it's been made public. Um, I have clients as well that are like, post away. The more the better. You know, we, we're not worried about it. Um, one thing, I want to go back to this again real quick, um, and this is just a, hopefully a quick story. Um, there was an elevator issue uh, it was an issue in an elevator. Uh, this guy was working, uh, it was an NCAA tournament, and it was the end of the night, and he was tired, and he got in the elevator with this person, and, you know, this, the, the person started to make small talk with him, and he's like, he was like, this sucks. This, people didn't know what they were, anyway, the, he didn't realize that he was talking to the, the head of that NCAA, like, you know what I mean? And he was terminated. He, he, the guy that hired him, so like this is this guy was like a, the third party to the vendor, and like literally he the guy drove him home the next day. Um, so who's around? You you just never know. Just keep it to yourself. It's the old if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. Um, if you can't be honest, be quiet. That's my uh, personal favorite. Um, all right. Um, but yeah, so again, and it, it calls back to always work in your client's best interest. Um, I want to be an asset to the client. I want that client to know that, you know, if they hire me, uh, you know, f for the next five years, they're going to get the same experience. Well, hopefully better, right? Um, it's kind of like, you know, I don't consider, it's not me against the world, to paraphrase Tupac, it's me against me, right? Like, I, I'm not, a, I'm, Ron, if someone looked at me and Ron, like, um, of course they'd say like, fantastically looking, good looking guys, but, right? But they would look at us and they'd be like, well, we're competitors. Oh, I don't look at Ron as a competitor. Um, I look at him as a colleague, you know, the same as all of you, whether you're doing headshots or doing stuff that I do, I just want to be better than I was yesterday and a week from a week ago and a year ago. I'm just trying to get better than me. And if you all have that attitude, then I think you, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be better off and don't be, don't worry about like, I have seen some of the stuff that I, there's photographers in this room that have taken some fantastic images and I'm like 
20 year ago Chris might be like, damn, like angry or envious overly. Um, and that's just because I didn't know. But now it's, if I look at it and that's fantastic. Like I'm, ex I'm excited for that person for what they did. Did you say I'm expiring? Inspiring. Oh, inspiring. Uh, all right. Inspiring. I thought I was having, all right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and if you, and if, again, if you're like, I could go to like, Seth has been very good about sharing his, uh, like I see an image that he shot and it was just the, the red, the weather was terrible. And I'm like, how did this happen? Like, how did you make this happen? And he's not afraid to, to talk about it, you know? And in general, I'm not afraid to talk about that stuff either. Um, and by, so we, uh, Seth actually, not to call Seth out more than I should, but I am, he's got a workshop coming up. You should follow Seth. Um, he's got a really cool workshop coming up. Um, and he does a podcast, not unlike Ron, but like fantastic advice. And it's free. It's May 11th. Thank you. In Holyoke. At Wisteria. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's all about off camera flash. Which is huge. Which is huge. So, moving, moving on. All right. <coughs> this is the meat of it here. Photographer etiquette. I have shot. Um, I. Uh, I'll use uh, enshrinement as an example because it's a huge. It's a it's a world event, world class event that happens right here in the city. And if you haven't worked it, you may work it someday or be involved with it. I have been lined up in position with AP photographers, USA Today, people that I know or know people who know. And then I have somebody walk right in front of us and start taking pictures. Um, that's upstaging. I just went, I went from right from be considerate. They're like, it's terrible. People will do that. Don't do that. Look behind you. Make sure there's not a photographer that's already been set up. Um, generally, be considerate. If you're working a gig, um, never. This is the kiss of death. Like, I don't say, I don't talk bad about photographers, right? There are exceptions. If I am at a, if I am at a gig and it's, this happened, and this one photographer, it's, he's notorious. Um, it was my gig, my client. He was there for someone who was an attendee taking photos, and he handed his business card to my point of contact, and I wanted to wring his neck. Um, bad form and photographers will talk it's a small community um, you don't want to have that reputation I don't think you do I mean I don't want that reputation um, but it's kind of like and I'm sure Ron and so Ron and I this could be exactly there's a percentage chance that my slides are exact match as Ron's you just, just wait him and I did not converse about we didn't talk about, about it about but it's the, it's the infinite number of monkeys with the infinite number of typewriters is what, a I'm a monkey man. So, but that wedding, you are there, if I'm second shooting, I am essentially an employee of whomever I'm, I'm working for. There is no, I don't, my business cards just magically disappear when I'm, when I'm doing that. I don't share that. That's bull. Happens. Um, and again, you're acting in your client's best interest. Uh, if I'm shooting for somebody, they trust me, I would think, I don't want them to look bad by something that I did. If I say something off color or, and God forbid you decide to, to have a drink, or like the, the, you know, the groomsmen decide you ha have to have a shot, I, I, I would respectfully decline that, unless it's really good scotch. Um, <laughs> This is a tough one. Act like you've been, I decided to keep this one in here. So it's like, um, you can, uh, you can get a little over enthusiastic, a little excited about being in a, in a, in a spot. Um, try to keep your cool. Try to be, um, try to be, uh, you know, just go with the, uh, the energy in the room, perhaps, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
listen to the other photographers, listen to what they're saying, and try to match that energy, unless they're being jerks, which sometimes photographers are. There are photographers out there. Most of them are like grizzled veterans, like they're, they're ancient, like there's dust in their veins and they're still walking or something. They're like, anyway, but, um, but they're real cranky. Um, and you may know one like that. Hopefully I'm never like that. Um, again, don't upstage, be considerate, communicate with other photographers about position. Sometimes when I have to shoot overhead at the garden, um, we're, shoot, we're shooting in a suite and there's like, I have photos, there's like seven photographers with like long lenses and we're in front, uh, we're behind the TV crews, like the, TV, the big TV cameras. Um, they will already invariably have been there prior to me. So they, that day, so they have their spots. I will say, do you mind, do you mind if I sneak in here when, you know, they're attacking this rim and, you know, you just, they're going to give you a space. They may grumble. Rarely do they grumble about it, but you know what? You're being considerate. You're being nice instead of trying to say, you know, I'm working for so-and-so. So you got to, you know, you're just a newspaper. Newspapers are dead. You know, USA Today, right? Um, you don't do that. You just, you just don't do that. Um, and this is just a real, like if you're using remotes and there's other photographers using remotes, you just, you just communicate about, about channels, radio channels. Um, Eisenstadt, another really good photographer, never met him. I think he died before I was born. But uh, this is a nice little quote. Um, This is true. I mean, you have to know your, you have to understand your exposure um, and your lighting, but you're going to get better photos uh, when you're clicking with the subject, right? Um, but this is also um, lends itself towards your reputation and being better um, in the community and getting referrals. I, um, one good referral, I have had some referrals that I couldn't have advertised for it, but it was a, this one in particular, <clears throat> it was a client and actually both of these play into, the, it was a client I was doing work for, it was in Hartford and I had done work for the client before. Little did I know that the per my point of contact had already talked to um, this person because they'd inquired and I just was there doing what I do they approached me. That was two, a year and a half ago, all right? Um, I just started to work for them in December. So that, that referral just sat there for a while. Um, sometimes it's kind of like the, the old, uh, was it, uh, if you love something, set it free, and blah, 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 if it doesn't come back, you hunt it down and kill it or whatever it is. Um, referrals are like that. It's like, it's like, it, it happens. People get busy. Um, this particular client is a, is a project based client and they were, they needed to have a, a, a project that was closer to me uh, geographically to start with. Um, anyway, but I, you know, I had, I had a, an a, a recently an agency come in and they're just, they're just like, again, it took two or three months. And, you know, I gave him my price and I didn't hear back from him from like, for like a month and a half. After like two or three weeks, I'm like, well, I got to move on. Which, I mean, I wasn't sitting by the phone, mind you, but it was on my mind. I'm like, I haven't heard from them. I haven't heard from them. It's just the nature of the beast. But they ended up came, coming back and we shot two weeks ago. Um, they're busy, which is, goes back to, you know, we want to be an asset. We want to take the pressure off, you know. If you talk and you lay the groundwork with your client um, ahead of time, um, you're going to be in that best position, again, all the way back to the beginning, um, you know, the, you're going to be in the best position to help that client and have the best, uh, the best results. Um, I have had, so when I first started um, on my own, I shed my corporate coil. Um, I worked for the Republican in name only newspaper. Um, 
And it did not pay much. It did not. It was not a sustainable gig for me. Okay, um, but it did a lot of things for me. I got shutter clicks. I got to shoot a variety of things that I had never been able to shoot. But I also met a lot of people. So my mo not only was to do the best job I could, treat each one, each gig that they sent me like my, you know, next big break. But also to meet people, not to hand out my card necessarily. If they ask for a card. You know, uh, maybe I bend the rules there a little bit because um, I'm a freelance guy and, and people know, you know. Um, I mean, you have to use your best, your best judgment. But um, again, if I started full-time eight years ago, I was doing newspaper work for like two years while I was trying to figure how to run a business out. Um, I still have people coming to me from the stuff that I cultivated eight years ago. Um, so here's a, so here's a, a bunch of just sort of a mix and match, right? Um, this is sort of intuitive. Develop nonverbal communication for capturing candid moments without disrupting the main event. This is a little more, more uh, techie than just like career stuff, but um, it's a nice skill to develop. Um, you know, by, I will, you know, if there's a group of people that I want to photograph, I'll stand a little closer to them and I try to make eye contact, I hold up the camera. The other people in the group don't know that I'm communicating with this, you know, because I don't want to interrupt people when they're just meeting each other, they're, they're chatting or whatever. I'll wait for a break. Hopefully I make eye contact. Um, it's just, I think it's a good skill to have. If you have two cards, uh, two card slots, use them. If your camera does not have two card slots, get a camera that has two card slots. I have had, I've had, um, well, I've had more than one instance. So um, I've had cards fail. Thank God I had a second card in and they were writing, you know, side by side. Um, but I've also chimped away a photo that I shouldn't have. Chimping is what they say, you know, you're looking at the, you know, it's like when they're huddled around looking at a sticker or a bug or something. I don't know what they call it. But um, I'm like, delete, delete. Oh, I got into the rhythm of deleting and I deleted it. I immediately went. It was an NBA event. Um, this was a number of years ago. It was in New York. And I, my boss, thankfully, was there. And I was honest. I went right to him. I said, dude, uh, I have it in my raw, but they don't want the raw that, at that moment. Right, they want JPEGs only, which you'll see in a minute. Um, I said I, I screwed up. Um, you know, the number one draft pick, and it was like some, it was the owner of a team, or I don't even know who it was, some rich person basically. So we, he's like, hang on, and we re, we were able to recreate the photo. Um, but I wasn't. I wanted to have the image. I wanted that because, frankly, the the guy saw my credential. He knew who I was. He was going to ask for it, right? So I made a mistake. I, had, I have to make, make amends for it. But I did have a backup. Um, and, and that's super important. Um, the older I get, the more lists I make. Um, it's great to have a list. Like if you have like three core uh, products per se or services. All right, I have headshots with a background. I have environmental headshots. And I have, you know, lifestyle candids. Um, it might not be a bad idea to have a list for each of those. Because if you get to a client site and you, oh, I forgot my sandbags. If you're not using sandbags, you should be using sandbags. Because if somebody knocks something over and your light breaks, if you didn't bring a backup, you're screwed. You should have brought a backup, so bring backups. Um, also, it could damage somebody or something. Um, at least you're making an effort to, to mitigate damage. Um, scout locations. Uh, even if I have been to a location, this happened recently. I can't remember what it was, but I've been to this location a million times. That particular week or whatever, there was like construction on the street. Um, so driving by, I call the client. I'm like, hey, we're not gonna be able to use that as a location because blah, blah, blah. Cl Again, now you're taking stress away from the client. We showed up there that day. If we had showed up that there that day, uh, it would have been bedlam, right? 
planning ahead, scout the location, even if you've been there. Um, and, and know what the lighting is like. If you're shooting outside, you should have an app. I have an app that tells me exactly where the sun is going to be on any given day at any given time. Um, and you use that to your advantage. Uh, and then just, again, planning ahead. You know, wipe, format your cards, make sure your batteries are charged. Just be prepared to do the, the best job you can. Um, so this goes back to your question. Um, don't be afraid to ask clients questions, but think about them first. Um, meaning, like, uh, you know, if we're shooting somewhere and it's like, uh, is, it, is this going to be indoors or outdoors? Um, I maybe don't have to ask that question, right? I can just be going to have I can have a uh, like a reflector or a bounce in my car um, to use as kind of a gobo, or I can have rain gear for my camera or whatever. Um, if you can figure it out on your own, do that because again, you want to you don't want to be a burden to the client. You want to make everything easy for them as easy as possible. Um, so I try not to ask questions that, and, and sometimes it's that, you know, like you click send and it's like, ah, why did I do that? I could have just brought a fill in the blank, you know, and it would have been fine. Of course, you don't want to bring your entire studio with you every time you do a shoot. Um, but the clients do appreciate, now, you kind of have to get a feel for the client, right? Because some clients are so busy, like they're so flat out, they're doing five jobs, especially after COVID. It seems like more and more, you know, companies and, and whatever, you know, their people are just stretched so thin. Um, so even asking a few questions uh, may take a while for them to get back to you, but it's important. And I think they all appreciate it because the end result is there. Um, and if you can put the questions in order or, or like in one email as opposed to sending seven emails, it's good. Um, this is, uh, I, I think this is, a, this is a pretty important one. So I have a variety of clients, right? Um, I don't talk to my basketball-related uh, clients the same way I talk to my ad agency clients. Um, my ad agency clients are a lot more, in general, savvy to photography, um, but there's commonalities, you know, like um, a contact sheet or a proof sheet. Um, my ad agency people know what that is, so I can use that language with them. Um, if you don't know, if any, if you don't know what either of those are, look it up. Like seriously, go and go and Google ph photography terms um, and and figure that stuff out because a lot of that is still relevant. Even if it's not relevant in your little in, in the circle that you're in right now, um, it, it it is. Um, corporate. If you're working, if you've never had a corporate job, well, you're lucky. Um, but corporate um, talk is different from other kinds of talk. You know, um, you've got to if you if you have a corporate experience, think about how people would email you especially the lifers, whatever company it was, like the ones that were 20, 30 years older than you and they were using these arcane um, uh, terminology. It's not really arcane, it's just they're oldies but goodies, right? Um, try to tailor what you say to, to the client. All right, does that make sense? All right, dear God, nobody's asking questions. Maybe that's good, maybe that's not. All right, yep, well, you don't count. You know. um, quick Portfolio tips and uh, some of this stuff, I guess, is 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 um, obvious. But uh, again, when and this is this applies again back to bless you to when you're delivering to clients, um, you don't want to give them a choice between bless you. You don't want to give them a choice between two images that look almost exactly the same. And if you're shooting on a, one of the new high res like a mirrorless cameras, you're crushing them with data. They don't want that, you know, and, and you can always tell them, I always tell them, look, so depending on the client, but like if you want 
um, I cropped these because you said you were going to use them for X, Y, Z. Or I didn't crop these because you were going to use these in a print layout and I wanted to let your graphic artist um, handle how it crops because they don't crop in, in print, they don't crop to our standard print sizes, right? So I, when I deliver, I explain, here's why I did what I did. If you want cropped stuff, or if you want alternate angles or wide shots, I have them, but we didn't talk about it, and I, don't think, I didn't think you would want it in this round. On, on occasion, they come back and they're like, yeah, you know what? We could use for a corporate, you know, our, our annual uh, corporate report on the cover, we could use a wide shot of whatever, you know. Um, but again, you're going back, uh, let's see, can I do this without screwing this up? You're, you know, you're, you're talking about the client, and you're, you're asking them questions. I would rather, instead of not asking any questions and just showing up and flying by the seat of my pants, I would rather ask, I would rather err on the, on the side of um, annoying a client with questions. But I mean, again, think about them, right? Oops. So um, don't show too many variations of the same edges, images. Um, goes without saying, for portfolios, this, I mean, only show photographs that you've taken. Sir. Yeah. That's an excellent point. And actually, so I do that. I do have a client that I do that with. I they know, um, and I offer it to other clients. I'm like, so I'm going to send you a batch of 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 low res for social media, because that delivers quick, right? And then they don't have to mess with these massive files. And then I know that um, they may do some print or use them or want them in their archive later. So I send them two batches of the same photos. Um, now, if a client comes to you after the fact, right. So. Scope creep, uh, yeah, it's scope creep, and but I'm so I try to accommodate, right? So when I shoot um, side by side, one card, I shoot JPEGs, and I shoot the same stuff raw. So in theory, I have the ability to go back and do that. Now, if you have laid the groundwork ahead of time, right? You've got. In theory, you've got, a, you've got a contract. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a lawyer. I have no law school. I barely finished. Well, never mind. Um, but you have an agreement in writing that says, so, so you're not going to use these for print. Like, I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask straight up. So what are you going to use these for? Okay, so here's, and I regurgitate it back to them. So here's what I understand about our shoot on, you know, on May 19th. We're going you know, to, I'm going to arrive half an hour early. We're going to start at this time. We're going to do headshots. We're going to do this, that. And my understanding is that you're not going to use any of these. You're just going to use these photos for your website. Now, that's pretty, it feels pretty clear to me. If they come back after the fact and say, well, OK. So then you have a decision to make. You can charge them more. Um, you can say, OK, well, you know, I didn't really prepare, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it happens. You just got to be prepared for it. But it, lay it out ahead of time. You know, and it's like, it's like, and I'm, and I'm sure the wedding photographers, you know, it's like, if you do a wedding, like, I'll, I'll be hired to shoot an event. It's two or three hours. And I've learned that, okay, in the language in the event, uh, in the, if it's a contract, formal contract, or if it's just email, I'd say, all right, so you've got me from seven to nine, blah, 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 this date, and, and lay out whatever they wanted. If, if you want me there longer, 
This is the hourly rate after that. So that way when they, because that night of, if they say, uh, can you stay another hour? It feels real tacky and cheesy for me to be like, yep, there's just going to be another $300. That's like, it's like, that's, that's a tough conversation to have, especially, again, when they're, they may have had a cocktail or two, whatever, but you've already laid it down. You've, it's in writing. You've got it. So it's like, okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, be prepared. Be prepared. So does that answer your sort of? No, it was like a, like a point. That yep. Like I've been there like a few times, so just want to share it with you guys. And that's a great option to give your clients. Say, I can give, you, I can give them to you, you know, social media size, you know, and it's easy. I use uh, Lightroom. Um, so I can export it, you know, with a certain pixel length at a certain DPI. And it's a piece of cake, and, and they feel like you know you're treating them like like gold, you know. Um, but it's a nice thing to offer. And then you know delivery is another thing. It's like well, some clients they have corporate firewalls, uh, or they, so they can't use Hightail, or Dropbox doesn't open, or um, you know there's any ma manner of deliveries. I have I actually there was one client. Um, I went out and bought a branded zip drives because. This client, I, it was a full day event, and it was a pretty big event. Um, they couldn't download all, their, all the photos. So I went out and got zip drives, and I loaded them all, and I mailed it to them. I said, here you go, and just keep the zip drive. You know? Again, it's, it's, kinda, it's not under-promising, but it's over-delivering, right? Um, so, so again, so portfolio, just super quick. Don't show, don't show stock, you know, if you, if you want work, you got to make it happen. Do some free shoots for folks and get some stuff in the bank and, and do it that way. Um, be selective. Again, same thing. Don't show too many variations. Just show your best stuff. And so uh, only show the work you want to get. If, if Seth starts, I'm just it's Seth Day. Seth's a wedding photographer primarily. If he starts showing photos of... Uh, a soccer game, you know, he's, is he, what is he doing? Is he advertising? It, it, it weakens your brand. All right. So this next slide, this is a little inside baseball, and I think my time is getting close to the end. Um, so this is two-part slide. Um, this is legit from an email from the NBA um, for all, this past All-Star. Um, so it's two, it's two files. So this is... We used to have meetings prior to All Star, like uh, like the night before or the that Thursday night. Everyone would get together because there would always be greenhorns, would be rookie photographers, um, and whatever. Um, and the boss would be like, All right, you know, because we've had a couple of, of All Stars in New Orleans, um, and he's like, I know where we are. Don't go out. You know, don't do this. Don't do that. Um, and he's some a few of the vets he's talking to, but not me. Not me. Um, but Anyway, so, we, so in lieu of getting together, because we just couldn't, um, this, is, this is what they want from, I mean, everybody. But this is, a, this is what they sent out. So it's like, again, arrive early, check in with your point of contact. Sometimes you can't find your point of contact because they're not answering their phone. You just got to wing it. They want to see the entire place empty. Why? Why? So that next year, their staff, their production staff, can see how an event was set up because they, they're, they're already planning for the next two years of All-Stars. They want to see what works and what didn't work. 360 view, um, uh, stuff you don't think about, uh, sponsor signage, just safety stuff, um, food and beverage set up. Uh, and again, they just, but they, you know, they will bang through and give you all this information, um, which... No. So this is just general, like kind of general advice. This is a little bit, so this, so this is where I learned not, I mean, early on the first all-star I remember going to a meeting for, they're like two cards all the time. Um, there are separate shot lists for events. So, that's what was that? so again, this, so this is all the same email, but it's like, this is just telling the people who are new, 
get there early, find your point of contact, do all this stuff. Then on top of that, they will, they will give like, like if somebody like Asia, Asia Wilson's speaking, um, we need to get photos of her with the commissioner. We need to get this, that. So they'll get into more depth, right? Um, stuff that you end up figuring out over time. But when you're shooting an event, you know who the CEO is. I mean, when you're shooting a, a, a wedding, you know, kind of know who the bride and groom are, right? And I don't know if this is a real thing, but the, the bride is always in focus. I don't know if that's, if that's a real thing or not, but that's always been my thing. Maybe that's why I'm not a wedding photographer. But um, so this, so again, so um, all images, blah, 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 submit high res. So there are guys out there shooting with those, uh, the mirrorless stuff. Um, and I, I was shooting, so there was, the, uh, there was a Thursday night, they had fireworks after this, uh, like the, uh, the kickoff. So some of my photos, I, I found a, uh, uh, like a, like a concrete, uh, like a fence post and I, I put my camera down and I was doing long exposures for the fireworks. Um, and it was really kind of, it, it, it worked out really well where I happened to be. Um, cause I got the crowd moving. I got the, the field house in the background and then I got the fireworks. Some of those files could be longer, could be by bigger files. So you've got to be uh, kind of careful about that. Um, again, sometimes they ask for raw if it's a special deal, um, like portraits or whatever, shoots two cards. Uh, good question. So this is all editorial. 99% uh, of what I do for the NBA specifically is editorial. And they go to Getty Images. Uh, the selects go to Getty Images. There can be no manipulation. They, they, will, they will mess with a photo, like if it's a, real, it's a photo that they really want to have, They'll mess like within, I would say, a half a stop, three quarters of a stop, um, but they won't manipulate the photo. There's no Kate Middleton uh, controversy or, or any of that going on Dude, with any of this. Um, uh, so you've got to get it in camera. And I've got, I've, I've had shots that I screwed up, um, that I was on the wrong setting because I was like the the backs, the inside, like the catacombs of arenas. Sometimes they're super well lit. And sometimes they're just like like the loading dock. It's just like it's like sunlight. Some, and you know if you're not paying attention, you can screw things up. And I've, I've there's some people that I wish I had photographed a little bit better because they never saw the light of day because I had screwed up the exposure. It just is what it is. They they won't they won't they won't go out of their way. Um, and they say not to shoot raw, but what they really mean and you know is they want JPEGs. But they do, on occasion, do want the raws if it's like portraiture or, or they whatever. Want to deliver the they want the del yes. So, so you can shoot raw, do what you need to do, and then deliver You could do that, but so the other thing too is so, so like especially, especially with the uh, um, the way they're doing things now, and that's evolved over the years. Like I used to have to caption each photo that I sent, and I worked directly with Getty. Where now um, the league is is doing that, but. They'll actually, they have workstations um, at the arena. You plug in your card and it dumps it to, uh, to the service, um, to the NBA service. And those have to be JPEGs. They have to be JPEGs. So. Um, yeah, so uh, game time, bless you. So game time, um, right into an Ethernet port. So I have an Ethernet port on my cameras and I plug right in and I take a photo and it goes to the editor immediately. Um, so it's, all, it's about as real time as, as it can get. Um, but those are all JPEGs. Um, and you gotta make sure you're sending, like, so I'll still shoot J, uh, JPEG and RAW side by side. I just have to make sure that the card that is transmitting is the JPEG card, not the RAW card. Cause you will get, I think, again, it goes back to talking to the client, you know? Um, this, this one particular client I have, um, they do share some stuff like on LinkedIn, but this is almost exclusively for brochures and print because it's a high end business and they're, you know, so I, frankly, I, that's why I bought the R5 for this client because I knew that they wanted, they were going to want high res, uh, high res prints. So you have to communicate that with, you know, um, if you are shooting 
that giant file size and um, but they only use it for the web, you can, you can dumb it down. But, you know, so it's give and take, right? So you have to deal with storage on your end and backing up, right? So if I shoot 500 photos, you know, at full capacity with the RAW with the R5, I mean, it's a giant, uh, it's a lot of storage. And then I'm doubling that because I'm backing it up. Um, so it's kind of like, well, do, what do I really need? What do I need to be able to, to deliver the client? And another thing is, I try to be very careful in what I, how I say this, but I ensure that the client has downloaded the photos. They have possession of them. And I, re I recommend that they, they back them up because I don't provide an archival service. And I can't control, you know, if I have, if I have a catastrophic event, God forbid, um, and they want their photos in a year, it's like, look, I, I mean, I do have photos going back a ways, but I just cannot guarantee it. So I always, you always make sure that your client has received the photos. Um, and another thing too, is, as an aside, and I would kind of wrap it up because Ron is, uh, Ron's champing at the bit here. Um, if you don't hear anything back from your client and you know they have the photos, you did a good job. If you hear something back positive, you did a great job. Um, to follow up with a client and say, did you like the photos? Did they come out okay? Um, <clears throat> that's kind of, uh, that kind of shows like you're maybe a little insecure or uh, unprofessional. I did that early on. Like I, my first gig for UConn, I was like, I mean, they were cool. So I felt comfortable asking. Um, but I'm like, so hey, just following up, just making sure everything was okay with the images which is like sort of a soft way of saying, you know, was everything okay? Because uh, I didn't hear anything back from them. Not realizing, well, they're freaking busy and they don't have time to coddle me, uh, you know, as, as a photographer. So, um, so you, you know, if you don't hear anything back, you're, you're good, if that makes sense. That was just a little, little throw in. So, um, any other questions?